Hey friends, how's it going? Ash here, welcome back to Gent Sense. Hope that you're doing well. It's time for another This Week in Fragrance, what I am assuming is gonna be the last This Week in Fragrance of 2023. Yeah, whole other year gone, but we got 2024 coming up and I assume, I hope, it's gonna be even better than this year was. So we got a bunch of new fragrances to talk about that are coming out, a whole bunch. I do have to say, this is gonna be a little bit different than some This Week in Fragrance videos because usually I have like a whole ride up, you know, that the companies put out talking about the fragrance and all that. But there have been a number of fragrances released or announced rather that really don't have much information out on them right now. I'm gonna let you know about them so that you know what's coming down the pipe. And then as we get more information on those, I'll probably do an update video and let you know, you know, the full note breakdown and all that stuff. Cool, we on the same page. Before we start jumping into these fragrances, and there are a lot, like I said, there's new Tom Ford, there's new Ormoff, there's new Valentino, there's new Azaro, there's new Emporio Armani, there's new Jean-Paul Gaultier, there's, there's like new everything right now, or will be. I wanna give you guys a new code, which is GS25, GS25, and that's good for buy one, get one, 25% off at fragflex.com. And that does stack. So if you bought 10 fragrances, you would get five fragrance bottles at 25% off. And then there's also all these other codes if you wanna use those. Okay, I'm gonna start with some Tom Fords, okay? Let's get those out of the way. The first one I wanna talk about is called Vanilla Sex. When I saw the name for this, I legitimately laughed. Like, you know, people will send you text messages, LOL, but you know they're not actually laughing. When I saw that they're coming out with Vanilla Sex, I legitimately, I couldn't help myself. Just like, <laughs> The vanilla Sex, cool. I guess their next fragrance release is gonna be Jasmine Facial. Really looking forward to that one. Maybe Tobacco Tug Job, you know, that'll come out, you know, it's gonna be like a new flanker of Tobacco Venise. That should be nice. So here's the description. Uh, vanilla Tincture India, an ingredient created specifically for Vanilla Sex, exudes a soft sensuality. Vanilla reveals a pristine glamour warmed by mysterious florals and bitter almond essence. A timeless sandalwood quality mingles with enticing Tonka Absolute and an exquisite ultra vanilla molecule. So there we go. Vanilla Sex. Is this going to be like the, the preeminent vanilla fragrance? I guess we'll find out, but it has a bunch of vanilla, ultra vanilla, Indian vanilla, vanilla absolute, and then Tonka bean absolute, which Tonka can come across smelling a bit like vanilla as well. And then you have sandalwood, known for being a creamy kind of woody note, bitter almond, and florals. So just had to bring that one up because, you know, but that is not all, dear friends. No, <laughs> there's more info from Tom Ford. Some uh, spicy info here, some nice info. Oud Mineral being re-released. Yeah, that's right. Oud Mineral 2023. <laughs> really gonna be kind of more 2024, I would, I would imagine. But hey, Oud Mineral being re-released in the Signature Collection. It does say there are some twists on the notes. So a bit like a, a re-release with a little tweaking, a little change, a little twinge. A combination between rich oud notes with refreshing ocean minerals. Oud's warmth is complemented by a wave of fresh pink pepper, while fir balsam and amber balance the interplay of land and sea. A burst of smoky woods embraces a sensual skin-hugging musk that creates a fusion of contrasting elements. So this has pink pepper and salt off the top, fir balsam, seaweed, and sea notes in the mid, and then oud, amber, styrax, and musk in the base. Now oud mineral is uh, a fragrance that doesn't work for everybody. It's a, a little bit divisive in the way that it smells, but the people that love it do very much love it. Actually, I like it a lot, <laughs> truth be told. When I smelled it the first time, thought it was really interesting, very unique, stood out quite a lot, and uh, like I said, I enjoyed it. So I'm glad to see it coming back. That said, apparently, that is not the only Tom Ford news that we have here. Now here's the deal with these two fragrances. A lot of talk about these leaks about these, but they are not uh, official in the exact same way as Oud Mineral is. Now that one, uh, that's a done deal. These other two I'm assuming are a, a done deal as well, but there's far less info on these. So keep that in mind. And by the way, I'll have linked in the description websites where you can read up on this a little bit more on your own in case you want to. All right, the first one, Tobacco Freaking Oud. Yes, Tobacco Oud, baby, yes. Tobacco Oud is one of my favorite Tom Ford fragrances. I think it's amazing. 
It looks like it's getting a re-release, but not the same way as Oudmin Rawl. So Oudmin Rawl, uh, that's gonna be in the signature collection, like Beau de Jour. Beau de Jour was put in the signature collection, Ombre Leather, signature collection, that's where Oudmin Rawl's going. Tobacco Oud looks like it's gonna be in the reserve collection. So in case you don't know what the reserve collection is, those are the uh, Tom Ford private blend fragrances that have like the little gold plaque on the front instead of a sticker. Uh, my bottle of Bois Maracan is in the reserve collection. So it is both a blessing and a curse <laughs> that this would come back. Yay. Oh, more expensive. Uh, but if you are a fan, a lover of tobacco oud, be aware of that. And then also uh, apparently a Neroli Portofino Parfum will be coming down the pipe, which does make sense. Neroli Portofino, one of the bigger fragrances in the uh, entire private blend line. And for most people, when they think of summertime Tom Ford fragrances, Neroli Portofino is one of, if not the first fragrances that they think of. So this would join the original Neroli Portofino, Neroli Portofino Aqua and Neroli Portofino Forte uh, with a new parfum iteration in the line. So that's Tom Ford, that's Tom Ford. Let's keep it moving. Let's talk about Armoff next. Armoff coming out with a new Club de Nuit fragrance. Now, not a Club de Nuit private key fragrance. I have uh, a couple videos on those. Actually, I filmed three videos. Uh, I think as of when I'm shooting this, only two are out, one is not. But there's a Club de Nuit private key to my dreams, to my life, to my love, to my success. They look like this, so not the same. Club de Nuit bottle everybody is used to. Magnetic cap on these, which I dig. And these ones are pricier than your typical Club de Nuit. At discounters, these are you know anywhere between $60 and $80. But this is a normal Club de Nuit in the normal Club de Nuit bottle style. And what is it? It is Club de Nuit Oud. It's kind of interesting to me because the last Club de Nuit launch that we had was four different fragrances. Of course, Club de Nuit Untold, Iconic, et cetera, et cetera. This one, as of now, is just Club de Nuit Oud. Though I, I can't say for certain that there aren't other ones, you know, coming right behind this one. That's entirely possible because with the last four, uh, the first one that really got announced was Urban Man Elixir. So it's possible that there's going to be some more coming down the line or, you know, it's also possible it's just this, Club de Nuit Oud. Let's read about it. This fragrance boasts impressive qualities with beastly projection and a 24 hour performance. It combines luscious fruits and beautiful scents featuring long lasting citrus and sweet amber, culminating in an intoxicating vanilla aroma. Inspired by Middle Eastern influences, it's a versatile fragrance suitable for both day and nightwear, but caution is advised not to overspray as it can become overwhelming to some due to its fruity and long lasting quality. So again, they are doubling and tripling down on how friggin' strong this is. The scent experience begins with a burst of citrus notes, including orange, bergamot, and lemon, followed by enticing fruity middle notes, like fruit on fruit. As it dries down, the base notes of white musk, Madagascar vanilla, and amber contribute to its sweet and musky finish, leaving a lasting impression. It's called Club de Nuit Oud, and the note breakdown is orange, bergamot, lemon, more fruits, musk, vanilla, amber. What are we missing? Where's the oud note? I mean, I'm assuming it's gonna it's gonna be in there. I'm assuming that's not the full note breakdown, or it could be one of those weird fragrances where it's named oud, but then it, it really isn't, which would make a ton of sense. But as of right now, I have no clue what this would be a clone of, uh, no clue what this is supposed to be emulating or be similar to, but be aware that you got a new Club de Nuit coming down the road. Now a quick touch on Azaro Chrome. Uh, this apparently very popular at the moment, uh, re-releasing. Azaro is re-releasing Chrome Legend. Now Chrome Legend came out in the mid 2000s, came out in 2007. Uh, it also was discontinued, but then not exactly discontinued. So it's a little odd. You're gonna have to stick with me here. The original Chrome Legend had a different cap style that matched the bottle, plastic cap on top of the bottle. And that's the type that I have. Uh, but then for a, a while, you could find it again because it kind of like fell out of stores. You couldn't find it, then it came back. But when it came back, it had the same bottle shape, but then the cap was replaced and it no longer had a cap that matched what the bottle looked like. It just had this kind of like weird placeholder cap, like a little stainless steel tube looking cap. And I was like, what is this? And then was once again uh, discontinued and now it is being re-released once more. 
So a really weird path that the fragrance took and now as a new bottle style, which does look much more on brand for Zaro Chrome bottles in general. So this is the, uh, the write up for it. It says, unlike the 2007 version that was comprised of fruity nuances, herbal tones along with a resinous touch, the 2023 version is all about zesty, juicy notes of orange essence laced with a blast of watery notes that add a fresh and crisp element to the blend along with the base of earthy patchouli that lends the blend a woodsy and sweet edge. I do like the uh, look of the new bottle. It looks higher end. It looks classier, better put together. And I'll give you the original note breakdown from Chrome Legend as well so we can contrast and compare just a touch. It had green apple, tea, bitter orange, musk, tonka, vetiver, oak moss, cedar, amber. That's according to Fragrantica. And uh, now the new one again, orange essence, aquatic notes, and patchouli. So actually, extremely different. So without being able to smell and compare, I would assume that this is actually not so much a, a re-release as it is a new fragrance reusing an older name. All right, three more fragrances to talk about. Next one, Stronger With You Tobacco from Emporio Armani. Yes, a new Stronger With You exclusive edition. Now, I say it that way, not because it's probably gonna be bad, but because it's an exclusive one, a Middle Eastern exclusive. And those can be difficult to find sometimes. Typically, you have to pick them up from a, a discounter when they come into stock, you know, as soon as they get there. A fragrance buy usually has them at Joma Shop sometimes. And they're usually fairly expensive. When they first hit the market in the US at discounters, they sell out quickly. So it's, it's a pain to get them. But it is worth it, usually. Stronger With You Oud, very good. Stronger With You Leather, very good. Even Stronger With You Amber, which of the three exclusive ones so far is the one that has gotten the least amount of love, is still a really solid scent. And now you're coming at me with Stronger With You Tobacco. But we don't have the official note breakdown. Uh, I would assume it's gonna be a very boring note breakdown. That's typically how these uh, Stronger With You exclusive editions have gone. So just as an example, the Stronger With You Oud note breakdown is Vanilla Oud Lavender. So I would assume that the Stronger With You Tobacco Note Breakdown is gonna be something like Vanilla Tobacco Chestnut, Vanilla Tobacco Lavender, something like that. But do I know officially what it is? I do not. Uh, this one popped up for sale at a couple of stores. That's why people know about it. They took pictures of it, but I don't think it has been really officially announced anywhere. Like I said, no official note breakdown. And I think it was found at a duty-free in like Gibraltar or something, if I recall. And then another fragrance, which there is diddly information on this. I saw a picture of the bottle, which I don't even know if I can find now, and people have started talking about it and everything, so it would appear that this is confirmed, another one of those leaks, uh, but without very much info at this point. And it's the new Jean-Paul Gaultier's Scandal Pour Homme Absolu. So it essentially has like a gold style bottle instead of the uh, you know other Scandal fragrances, the original and Le Parfum. At this point, yeah, pretty much nothing, just the name Absolu. It's up in the air how this is gonna go, like in, as far as the fragrance itself, the direction they take with it, but feel free to hit me up in the comments, let me know what you think. Does the addition of gold and the name Absolu mean it's gonna go full bore like warm spicy, or are we looking at something that's adding in that booze or something completely different? And last but not least, a new Valentino Uomo born in Roma. This one is called Green Stravaganza. Green Stravaganza. So Valentino is pumping the Born in Roma fragrances. We had Born in Roma Intense, we had Rock Stud Noir, and now they've already announced this one. I mean, it wouldn't surprise me if there's like two or three Valentino Womo fragrances next year. They're just like, let's go, I need more. So there's a version for the ladies and a version for the men. I will talk about the men's version, the Womo version. Note breakdown, super simple. Top, bergamot, mid, coffee, and then base, star anise, and vetiver. Because nothing says to me, green, stravaganza, like coffee, star anise, and vetiver. <laughs> what? Here's the write-up. The male counterpart of the ladies' version opens with a burst of tangy citrusy notes using bergamot for an energizing effect. Against this resounding intensity, coffee begins echoing to lend a robust, dark, yet sophisticated facet to the composition. The blend rests on a bedding of a combination of spices and woods using the soft nuances of star anise and vetiver that accentuates the male energy even further. These are expected to hit in January, so very soon. And uh, as soon as they do, I will scoop up Green Stravaganza. And I am actually at this point very hopeful 
that this is gonna be a smash hit because Valentino has converted me. Born in Roma, I was not digging it, but like I've said a few times, um, each progressive release seemed to get better and better, and Valentino Uomo Intense, one of my favorite of the year, Valentino, Valentino Uomo Intense, Born in Roma Intense, those are two different things. Love you, Valentino Uomo Intense. So green extravaganza, I'm hopeful. Hey, it's me from the future, you know what that means? Another fragrance was announced. <laughs> Yeah. In the time between when I shot the video and right now, another big fragrance has been announced or released, which means I gotta put that in the video. Because this one was big enough that I feel like a lot of you wanna know about it. It's a new gentleman fragrance, Givenchy Gentleman Society Eau de Parfum Extreme. These flanker names, <laughs> they're just, they're longer and longer. I mean, that one's not awful, but some of these, it's getting to the point where it's like, you can't even make a YouTube title because the entire title is just the name of the fragrance. Anyway, New Gentleman Society Eau de Parfum Extreme. So uh, this one has, as of right now, dark ice coffee accord, floral notes, woody notes, and spicy notes. So obviously we don't have a real full breakdown here. With Gentleman Society Eau de Parfum Extreme, the bold new signature for men who make their own rules, Givenchy invites the most unstoppable gentleman to join the most iconic society. A dark iced coffee accord pushes this powerful woody floral and spicy scent to sensational limits for the most extreme Eau de Parfum. So obviously uh, not too much info there as far as the full note breakdown because this one, kind of like some of the other fragrances that have been uh, leaked, basically just started to pop up at some duty freeze. So when you look at that uh, note breakdown, obviously what's gonna jump out is that dark iced coffee accord, which I like coffee fragrances. So I'm already looking forward to this one, already pretty hyped. The other stuff, Spices, floral, and woods. I mean, that pretty much puts it in line with Gentleman Society, which had cardamom off the top. It had vetiver, Palo Santo, cedar in there. So obviously a lot of woods. And then a Narcissus played a, a pretty prominent role. So there's your florals. So I guess the question here will be, how much does it differ from Gentleman Society? How much darker are they gonna be going with this coffee? And how prominent is that coffee note truly going to be? And uh, I think it's actually a pretty good move. I mean, just from where I'm standing, because they've done a lot of other things with uh, the Gentleman line, you know, introducing different aspects, different notes, different accords to kind of push the overall scent profile a little bit this way or a little bit that way, but they have not really delved into coffee here. So I'm hoping it's good. So back to me in the past, hopefully something new doesn't get announced before I can actually get this edited and you have Another clip of me in a different shirt on a different day talking about a different fragrance. But for now, I think we're good. Yep, they announced another new fragrance. I'm never gonna get this video out, I swear. It's gonna end up being like two hours long with 55 fragrances or something. But there's another one, a new one that's been announced from Jean-Paul Gaultier in their Le Beau line. And this is Jean-Paul Gaultier's Le Beau Paradise Garden. It has an emerald green glass embroidered with a flamboyant vine leaf featuring colorful couture details. Who could resist? this naked bottle, let yourself be captivated. Yes, yes, who could resist this naked bottle? An unbeatable force of attraction plunges you into this hypnotic, sensual, masculine fragrance that is as elusive as it is irresistible. A woody green aquatic fragrance by master perfumer Quentin Bish putting in the work once again. This heavenly fragrance is a ray of tropical sunshine with its dazzling flowers and seductive scents, all plucked from the garden of Gautier. Fresh, salty coconut melds with green fig and sensual sandalwood. Spicy ginger, invigorating mint, and sun-drenched tonka bean. The green aquatic and woody notes of this fragrance are as passionate as the virile men who wear it. Ah uh, yes, virility. So this one has a top of coconut, ginger, and mint, mid of green fig, and base of sandalwood and tonka. Obviously, this is the newest in the LeBeau line. It maintains that coconut from the earlier releases, introduces fig, and then you've got ginger and mint in there off the top. I would imagine it's gonna have that sort of vanilla undertone to it as well. This one sounds awesome. I really like fig. Fig is a personal favorite note of mine. It doesn't get used super often, so that gives it a nice uniqueness when you do smell it in fragrances, especially mint's fragrances. And then you've got that coconut ginger mint off the top. Yeah, guys. Can't say for certain, obviously, but just looking at this, looking at the presentation, 
the note breakdown as simple as it is. This to me has the workings of potentially being one of the releases of the year and, and we're not even in the year yet. So I don't know if you guys are as hyped as I am about this, but LeBeau Paradise Garden to me is, is probably the standout of all these new fragrances announced in this video. LeBeau and LeBeau Le Parfum have grown on me so much over the past couple years. Like I, I, I really can't even tell you like, uh, Le Beau Le Parfum was my most complimented fragrance of the year. So this is, this is hype. This is hype. And uh, with that, uh, back to me in the past. Again, here we go. Like I said, a lot to talk about, a lot to take in. So many new releases. Some of them are pretty interesting. <laughs> I want you guys to let me know, what of these are you looking forward to? What do you think is gonna be like the fire release out of all those? Thank you guys for hanging with me here. Thank you for the support this year. I'll see you tomorrow with another fragrance video. See you later.